Good morning, lightning in a bottle. How are we doing today? Sunday morning. You guys look good. <laughs> Have you had breakfast yet? You having breakfast now? Cool. My name is Magda Freedom Rod, and today we're talking about how to thrive on a planet-based diet. The program doesn't say a plant-based diet, it says a planet-based diet, but the good news is that they're actually synonymous. So it's kind of a little play on words, right? So the bottom line about that nugget is that the more plants and the less animals we eat, the better off the planet is. So I care about you. I care about your body temple. I care about all the animals on the planet. And I really care about the planet a lot too. Hands up for who loves the planet. Yeah. OK, so you guys are in the right place because what we're going to talk about today is how to eat for a planet-based diet and how to thrive on a planet-based diet. So I'm going to make you a couple of recipes today. And as we go along, I'm going to make you yummy recipes, nutritious and delicious. I'll be educating you about the benefits for the planet, about the, the ingredients that we're using. So what I want you to, to leave with today is that there are some ingredients that are really planet-friendly and there are some ingredients that are not. Right, certain food choices that we make every day. I have, FYI, an online course called Conscious Eating 101. Who's interested in being a conscious eater? Right? So eating consciously, it's a little bit different than mindful eating. Mindful eating is really chewing your food and being super present to it and thinking about you know, the, the trail of where it came from and all that, which is, is all part of conscious eating. But conscious eating takes mindful eating to the next level because it's based in love, first of all. It's an expression of love. So I, with my work in the world, am taking a stand for love. We're talking about self-love, animal love, and planet love. So I think there's a lot of people out there talking about the health impacts of the food choices that we make, the impacts on our self-love, on our own body temple, right? There's a lot of people out there t educating about the impact on the animal kingdom, right? When we choose to eat animals instead of plants. There's a lot of people out there, but there's not enough, in my opinion, people out there talking about the effects on the planet. So your food choice is one of the most powerful things that you have. It's one of the most powerful assets that you have to create the world that I think we would all say that we want. So. For example, who's a fan of the rainforest, the Amazon rainforest? Anybody, anybody give a shit about the rainforest? Yeah. <laughs> I love the rainforest. I haven't gone there yet, but it's on my to-do list to go and spend time in that jungle because it is not only the lungs of the planet, but it's also the medicine cabinet of the planet, and we've only studied 1% of it. Only 1% and look at how much amazing medicine. We all are probably familiar with some of the plant medicines coming out of the Amazon, right? To some degree, whether we've experienced them or not. We've heard of them, uh, we're aware of them, we're aware of their healing. And only 1% of that has been studied so far, yet at the same time we're decimating the rainforest at an acre a second. Every single second an acre of the rainforest is disappearing, primarily driven by our food choice. So if we want to save the rainforest, we need to think about the food choices that we're making, right? Then we have we have dead zones in the ocean coming from all the factory farms, right? There's hundreds of dead zones where no life can exist in the ocean. So we're gonna talk about the alternative today. Right now, the status quo, the standard American diet is to eat a lot of animal products, which are not supportive of the personal body health, not supportive of the animal health, obviously, and not supportive of planet health. So. Today's the day we're going to learn how to eat in harmony with the planet. So I'm going to make you a couple of recipes. We're going to start with a hot morning tonic, which I like to um, propose as an alternative to coffee. If everybody's in, the, in a coffee habit and really wanting to maybe move out of that, recognizing that the acidity in the coffee is maybe a little bit too much for your body, a little bit too drying, maybe you're getting the jitters from all the caffeine, there's another way. There's an alternative. So we're gonna make that one now. This one's called a morning mojo. So I'm gonna give you guys this one first so that you can get a little mojo going for your morning. So the, the key ingredient is Dandy Blend. Anybody familiar with this? Raise your hand if you know this product. No, okay, cool, we're all learning something, yay! Um, by the way, I have prizes. 
which I really like giving out for participation. So if you have a question or if you have an addition to anything that I'm sharing, um, or if you have answers to the, to the questions that I'm asking, I really like to give out prizes. So that's just a little, little heads up for you. Okay, so the key ingredient is Dandy Blend. For, for I do a 16 ounce um, tonic in the morning with this, and I do two tablespoons. I'm not gonna be super anal about the recipes. This is more about the ingredients. And we'll do it to taste. Okay, so generally, and the re this recipe is on my website, by the way, the mailing list. Can somebody get the mailing list going around, please? I have two, two same thing, one for each side. If you want to give me your email, I'll send you a, my free ebook, The Conscious Eating Top 10 Superfoods, which is a really great starting place to move into more conscious eating. Question? Double speed, go, shake. Go, shake. And when you need to stop, just go fast. The dandy blend? No, not at all. This is this is not a green. This is dandelion root. So this is the this is kind of that smoky coffee kind of flavor. Um, that's your replacement for coffee. And then, and then my favorite food on the planet is hemp. Hemp is the number one best food for your body, for the animals, for the planet. So it's my number one conscious eating superfood. So the beautiful thing about hemp is it's a complete protein. And I'm gonna be addressing protein throughout the day because I know this is the number one stumbling block for a lot of people who feel like they need animal protein. There really is another way, and this is the number one plant protein. So it's perfect because it's a, it's a whole food, it's a complete protein, plus in addition to the protein, it has the perfect ratio of the, the, the healthy fats that you want, the omega-3, 6, and 9s. Perfect, perfect ratio. Nature could not have done a better job than with this product. Plus, it has chlorophyll in it. If you look at the hemp seeds, they have little green flecks in there. That's pure chlorophyll, which is um, just a tiny bit different than your blood. So chlorophyll helps to grow your blood. And um, there's about 200 last year. If was anybody here at my talk last year, I did get more greens into your routine. This is my third year here, by the way, you guys. So thanks for showing up and keeping me coming back because I love hanging out here with you guys and, and watching light bulbs go on in your head when I, when I teach you things. Um, but chlorophyll has about, if, in fact, I have on my YouTube channel, I have a little like 15 minute short version of my talk from last year so you can get the nuggets there. But chlorophyll has over 200 beneficial processes for your body, alkalizing, detoxing, building blood, all this great stuff. So hemp is the perfect food. And in fact, two years ago, I did a hemp hemp hooray workshop here because that's how much I'm into hemp. Hemp can save the world. I don't know if you guys know this. All right, so we have hemp. We have, and that's gonna make it rich and creamy. And then we have our dandy blend. We're gonna put in a whole bunch of Cinnamon, which helps to, from the self-love aspect, it helps to regulate your blood sugar. So if anybody has diabetes or hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, that's your friend. Um, my sweetener of choice is stevia, which I know some people are not a fan of stevia. I think it's kind of an acquired taste, but it is one of the healthiest uh, options that you can have for a sweetener. Okay, we're putting a, a whole bunch of maca in here. Maca is an, an adaptogen, so it's going to adapt to whatever your body needs in the moment, and it's going to give you a lot of energy, especially for the men. Maca is really good for the men. I do a chocolate, a chocolate maca, uh, chocolate, which really gives men um, that vitality we're all looking for. You know what I'm talking about? Juicy, juicy vitality. Maca is your friend. All right, here we go. All right, so here I'm going to put uh, some ginger. You know what? I need that other cube of ginger and a knife, please. We're going to put some ginger in here to make it a little bit spicy. And then the fun thing about this recipe is you can add in whatever supplements. Like if you have oil, like flax oil or... Thank you. Different, and maybe a little cutting board. Thank you. Little, um, if you have supplements that you take every day that it's like you're swallowing a bunch of pills, this is a great way to take them. Just put them in here with the blender. And, um, thank you. 
All right, I love that we have yoga going on on the next stage. Let's all take a deep breath. It will pressure the pituitary gland. It will Bring your arms out to the sides just for a minute. Open your heart to receive this information that I'm sharing with you right now. Close your eyes, take a deep breath. Drop into your heart space. See that emerald gem right there in the center of your chest and allow it to expand. And bring into your awareness every man, woman, child, animal and sentient being on this planet. Bring them all into your heart space. And take a big exhale and send that love for all these beings out into the world. Send love from your heart center to the heart center of every sentient being on this planet. And relax, thank you. I also teach yoga and meditation. So this is a lifestyle, you know, this is a conscious lifestyle that we're all talking about here. So this is hot water. So if you're at home, you can, you know, use your stove or however you heat up your hot water. And this is it. It's just a handful of ingredients. I really want to keep this simple for you guys. I want to make this doable for you at home. How many people are trying to give up coffee? Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is a great alternative to coffee. I need sample cups. Oh, there's a couple here, but we're going to need more. So we, we always, Vitamix 101, make sure the lid is on nice and tight. Who's, who's had that thing where it's on the ceiling, you know? Okay, we start low, we start with it at zero, and then we bring it up slowly. And we'll bring it all the way up. Temp takes about 45 seconds or so to get fully blended. And that's it, just a few ingredients. You're gonna see how yummy this is. Thank you. And you can do this as a coffee alternative. see how we're doing. I like to taste as I go. Another good thing to add into this, which I don't have today, sadly, is turmeric. Mm. And a little bit of vanilla. Oh, that's very maca heavy. I hope you guys are ready to get vital with your, with your maca. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yum. Oh, yum. That's my favorite prayer to say over any food. We bless the food, raise the vibration of it before we eat it. That's part of conscious eating. Let's put this flat. Okay. Who's ready for a morning mojo? Yeah, this is your coffee alternative. And like I said, the, the me. recipe is on my website, which by the way is visionary-lifestyle.com. It's on those mailing lists that are coming around. Plus I have consciouseating101.com. And if you just search visionary lifestyle, you'll find me on every platform. I have a YouTube channel that I'm not that active on, but it's there. I'm really active on Instagram. In fact, if anybody wants to Instagram a picture of me and tag me, I have free prizes for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I'll make another picture. Shall we have enough for everybody? And I'm open to questions anytime. So an uh, interesting thing about hemp, since we're doing hemp recipes right now, is that it takes about 50 to 100 gallons of water to produce one pound of hemp. Um, and if we compare that to a pound of beef, right, if we're just looking at protein sources, uh, a pound of beef takes anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 gallons of water. 
And that pound of hemp has twice the protein as that pound of beef. So let's think about this, right? We're talking about conscious eating, right? So being mindful, tracing back that food choice all the way back to the, the true impact of it, the true cost of that food choice. So what, what is the price, you know, for eating that hamburger, right? It's, it's not just, whoops, it's not just um, the $8.95 or whatever the price tag is that's attached to it. It's also the, water, the, the resources from the planet. So if we want to eat in harmony with the planet, it's really important for us to consider the impact of the food choice. So since we're already 7.5-ish billion people on the planet, and by, say, 2050, we're looking at, if we stay on the current trajectory, we're going to be 11 billion by 2050. We have over 200,000 people being born onto this planet every day, and they need to eat, right? So we can take one acre of, or one and a half acres of land, and we can grow either one cow, which is 375-ish pounds of meat, or we can grow 37,000 pounds of plants, thousand times more. So look at that. Look at that from a global perspective, right? Think about that for a minute. We need to feed all these people. Oh, I need to put hemp in here. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, I do have this recipe on my website, but you can make it your own. You know, add turmeric, leave it out. Add ginger, leave it out. Maca, the maca and the dandy blend and the hemp are kind of the keys here. You could use whatever sweetener you prefer. Um, cinnamon makes it taste good, and like I said, it does help balance your blood sugar. How is it? You like it? You can handle it? Would that get you off coffee? Maybe? Maybe? cinnamon and everything. I mean, um, vanilla and cinnamon, actually. All right, make sure the top's on good. Remember that rule. Start at the bottom, bring it up slowly, and then crank it. And then put the love in it. So it's really important to put love into everything that we eat, right? Love and intention. So it is my great privilege to nourish your body temple with not just food, but like true nourishment with love. So like I said, I'm taking a stand for love on the planet and all the work that I do is an expression of love for you, for the animals, and for the planet. And by the way, can you see my pants? You notice how they're like rainbow, right? There's, that's very intentional. These are Tiki. Do you guys know Tiki brand? They have a booth over there. They're made out of recycled soda bottles. Yeah. And they're rainbow and sunset all at the same time. So the reason I wore these was to make this point for you today is that I consider myself a rainbow warrior. Who's familiar with that term? The Hopi prophecy? Right? There will come a time on the planet when, when all classes, creeds, and colors of people will come together to make the earth green again. It starts out when, when the animals are dying, when the planet is dying. This group of people will come together to make the earth green again, and they will be known as the warriors of the rainbow. So I consider myself a rainbow. My yoga students, some of which are here, know very well how obsessed I am with rainbows, because it's also our chakra system, so it's also a reflection of us. Last time, inhale deep in. Hmm. All right, here we go. Where's my sample giver outers, Hannah? You want to pour this actually and do that while I do something else? Thank you. So maybe just do them. Um, how many people? 
Yeah, do like a half cup so everybody can get a taste. All right, I'll let you do that. Um, okay, so that's, can you rinse this for me, please? That's one recipe. We're going to do um, a couple more recipes. I want to do, a, and I'm also going to end with a tempeh. I'm going to do a tempeh recipe today, which is tempeh. Who knows tempeh? Right, this is a great protein source if you're on a plant-based diet. You want to make sure, a couple things with tempeh, that it's organic. Um, soy is, always needs to be organic, and then also ideally fermented and in moderation. That's my stance on soy, because there's a lot of conflicting information out there about soy. You don't want to be eating soy every day, all day. Um, from a planetary perspective, there's a lot of soy being grown in the Amazon rainforest and other places. They're cutting down the rainforest to plant soy to feed to the cows so that we can have the 99 cent hamburger. This is killing the planet. Our demand for the cheap, you know, primarily fast food, but not necessarily, um, is, is really the number one driver killing the planet. So we have um, the majority of emissions that are going towards climate change, which is the number one threat to the human species, is coming from animal agriculture. It's anywhere from 18 to 51 percent of emissions contributing to climate change is coming from animal agriculture. So the answer is simple to reversing climate change. Really, it's actually simple, and it's a mantra that I use as a hashtag that's eat more plants. Eat more plants. Anytime you have a choice to eat a plant or an animal, consider it. Consider, well, it's medicine or poison not only for my body, but also for the planet. So next we're gonna do uh, a green smoothie. This one I like to call the as green as it gets smoothie because talking about protein again, recognizing the concern that, that people have. I'm, I'm gonna call it a neurotic concern, but it's not your fault. You've been conditioned by the media and by the meat and dairy industries and the egg industry that you need to have lots of animal protein in your diet to be healthy. I'm here to tell you that it's not true and there's another way. And so this is an incredible product. This is Green Protein Alchemy. This is chlorella and spirulina. Two tablespoons of this green powder has 16 grams of protein. So a fun fact is that you only need, you're, you only need about 10% of your calories to come from protein. We're eating way too much protein in this country and in our culture, and we need to really get a handle on it because it's leading to obesity and diabetes and heart disease and cancer. So we're doing, I do two tablespoons of this product. We could also add some of this protein, which why not? It's here, we'll do it. We're gonna make this a super, super protein. You gotta be careful with your protein smoothies though because you can really overdo it. Your body can only assimilate so much at a time, maybe 30 grams or so. So if you're making a 60, you know, you're eating that steak or cow or whatever, thinking, oh, I'm getting my, you know, 80 grams of protein that I need. Your body's not even assimilating all of that when you eat it all in one sitting. So there's our green powder, there's our protein powder a bit of sweetener, which becomes important when you're doing the green powders because they can be a bit bitter. Then of course my favorite, hemp seeds. Gonna make it nice and creamy and rich. we want to put in there cinnamon makes everything extra yummy and then we're gonna do some greens now my favorite greens to do in this smoothie are name it parsley I give you a prize that's for you whoever said parsley that's for you you're so parsley is one of the heaviest concentrations of chlorophyll. We talked about chlorophyll a minute ago, right? Just grab it, throw it in there. And then we're gonna do cilantro. 
Who can tell me what cilantro is good for? Lifting heavy metals. Number one, right there. Boom. That's it. Cleansing heavy metals. Good catch. Yeah. Cleansing heavy metals, which we all need, right? What are they spraying in the sky? We don't know. Could be some heavy metals, right? We need to be constantly cleansing. Even if you have the, the cleanest body on the planet. I need water. Is there a big thing of water I can have on the stage, please? Um, you're, you're still taking in toxins everywhere you go just by osmosis of the environments that we're living in, especially if you live in a big city. So it's really important to be cleansing all the time. And having a lot of greens and chlorophyll in your diet is automatically cleansing you. So I'm going to add some ginger in this just because it makes it yummy. Yeah, you know, I'm done with this. We could actually switch them out. Okay, if you want. It would be good to get that out of the way. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. Is that stable there? Looks like a little rocky. <laughs> Let's not find out the hard way. Okay, but I do need to be able to fill it, so. Okay. All right. Who's a fan of the oceans? Who likes to swim and surf and travel and see the beautiful ocean around the world? And have you ever gone snorkeling or diving and you see like all those amazing like rainbow, like a whole nother world, right, under the ocean? Well, obviously the ocean is part of the planet and I'm a Pisces, so that makes me naturally into the water. Yay, fishy friends. What's up? Um, I love the ocean, and I love the rainbow of colors and the amazing life that, that lives in it. Um, you know, the whales, the dolphins, the urchins, all of it, right? So another, another reason that I do what I do is to save the ocean because... The ocean is, is dying, and it's more acidic now than it's been in the last 300 million years. And that's from CO2, that's from carbon emissions, and that's from, um, it's dying also because of the overfishing. So I'm starting this low, and then I'm going faster. I'm gonna get that on high. Uh, can you tell me some ice? Like, can you give me a bowl of ice, please? Thank you. So all the coral on the planet is dying. Are you guys aware of that, that the coral's getting bleached, right? We actually have now an end date for that. It's about by 2048, kind of bumping right up to that 2050 with the population is gonna be about 11,000. So right up at this time, 2048, 2050, we're looking at a lot of things shifting on this planet. And that's not so far away, right? That's definitely in your lifetime, right? That's definitely in your kid's lifetime. So. We have, our food choice directly impacts the health of the ocean. Again, like I talked about earlier, there are dead zones in the ocean that are, that are occurring because of the overfishing, number one, the carbon that's landing in the ocean and acidifying it and killing the oxygen. So the thing about the oceans is they're dying. Does anybody know, um, Whale Wars or Sea Shepherd, Captain Paul Watson, you guys follow that at all? You guys would love, th these guys are pirates. They're out there enforcing the laws of the ocean. They're basically intercepting the big whaling ships and stopping these big Japanese whaling ships from illegally poaching the whales. But they're totally badass uh, pirates, you know, and they have like their flag looks like a pirate flag and they're out on these big ships and they're supported by a lot of amazing people and celebrities go out on their tours and stuff and they, Doctor uh, Captain Paul Watson is, is one of the people who really pushed me when I heard him speak. I'll never forget the day being in the audience and hearing the nuggets that he was sharing and how that shifted, thank you, that shifted um, my perspective about the way that I was going to be an eater on this planet. He was explaining how the oceans are dying and that 40% of the fish that we're taking out of the oceans now is being fed to pigs that, as feed, you know? So we're overfishing the ocean for our bacon habit. That was the day I gave up bacon. That was about 10 years ago. And um, these are important things for us to know as conscious eaters, right? So uh, there's another thing about fish. If you're eating fish, you have to understand that 
For every pound of fish that comes out of the ocean, there's another five, all the way up to potentially 100 pounds of bykill, which is coming from the unintended catch. So we're talking about endangered sea turtles, porpoises, whales, all kinds of fish. Um, also, by the way, just FYI, shrimp is the worst ecological food you can eat because it trolls the bottom of the ocean and destroys the ecosystem of the ocean. But with fish, you have to think about it like this. When you go into a grocery store or you order a, a piece of fish in a restaurant, consider that it's not just the pound of fish on your plate or in your shopping basket. Attached to that is a five pound bag of miscellaneous ingredients, right? Porpoise, whale, endangered sea turtle, 20 other kinds of fish, whatever. That's what you're actually consuming as a consumer. And the ocean is overfished, which is killing it, which is our oxygen supply. Every other breath, every second breath that we breathe is coming from the ocean. So it's my observation that at this point, eating animals is suicidal. It's not helping us. It's hurting the planet and it's killing us as a, as a human race, as a species. So there's another way, and that's what we're talking about today. So the planet-based diet, we're talking about a win-win-win diet here. And this isn't like a fad diet. This is a lifestyle, right? It's the rainbow, rainbow warrior lifestyle, right? So for the people who give a shit about the planet, know how powerful your food choice is. want to do a little more ice, make it a little icier for you. Ice, ice, baby. So another topic we could talk about, can you hear the mic over that? Okay. Another topic we could talk about is world hunger. How many people realize that world hunger is impacted by your food choice. Right? That's, what? How does that, what? Okay, let's discuss. Let's discuss. It takes about 16 pounds of grain to make one pound of meat, beef, for example. So we're using all this land to grow all these grains to feed the cows. Well, the truth is that the grain that we're growing on the planet right now to feed the cows for the meat industry, for the animal agriculture industry, could feed 800 million starving people. So let that sink in for a minute. Your choice to eat plants as opposed to animals helps the starving people, or helps world hunger, helps the rainforest, as we've discussed, helps the oceans, as we've discussed. And we didn't even get into your body temple, but that's not really the focus of this talk today. The focus of this talk today is the planet and how we can eat best in harmony with the planet. But the good news is, is that this conscious eating lifestyle, you can start with this one, um, this conscious eating lifestyle is a win-win-win. Nobody loses. Your body gets all the nourishment it needs. We're talking about whole foods, plant-based, right? We're not talking about a bunch of processed foods and things that you buy in boxes and in bulk at Costco and stuff. We're talking, like, unless it's hemp seeds. Okay, so these samples are going around and we're gonna make another one here. So this is the As Green As It Gets smoothie. This is a mega protein smoothie. That I'd be interested to hear your feedback, guys, if this is something that, um, that you like as it is because there's a lot of you know fresh greens in here right so this is it can be kind of an intense flavor but the good news is is that when you eat this way you know if you're way off if you're like eating fast food every day this is going to be a huge shift for you right but if you're already somewhat on a conscious diet and a mindful diet and you know you're having greens in your diet and stuff your palate's going to be in a different place so it can be your, the good news is that your palate adjusts. That when you start eating healthier, your palate adjusts and then you start to crave. You start to crave these healthier foods and it's like 
you taste something and all of a sudden it's too sweet, you know, something that was prepackaged or, you know, that you're used to having and you then you eat this way for, you know, a couple of weeks and you go back and you're like, whoa, my palate has shifted. It happens and it takes, you know, 21 days to create a new habit. So, you know, maybe you can give yourself a little challenge and, you know, if you're doing whey protein in your smoothies, like to build bulk, um, I would challenge you to switch to a hemp protein or a pea protein because whey is not doing your body temple any good. I promise you that. It's, tax it's toxifying your kidneys. It's taxing your kidneys. It's making them work way harder than they should. Does anybody have any questions so far? Yeah. What do the hemp seeds do better than the whey? A great question, thank you for asking. Hemp is one of the most easily assimilated proteins into your body. It's one of the easiest for your body to break down. Plus, in addition to that, so and it's not acidifying. So animal proteins, and animal products in general, but animal proteins are acidifying to the body. They create an acidic environment in the body and all disease thrives in an acidic environment, guys. So it's really important to keep ourselves alkaline. This is your number one friend. Green foods are your number one friend to keep your body running alkaline. So in addition to it being very easy for your body to break down and assimilate the complete protein that is in hemp, it also has the perfect ratio of the omegas, the three, six, and nines, perfect the fatty acids that your body and your brain need. Plus it has chlorophyll, which is over, if you weren't here in the beginning, it has over 200 positive um, processes for your body. It affects your body in over 200 positive ways. So you want to be having a lot of chlorophyll. Can I have some of that right now, please? Thank you. Thanks. Does that answer your question? Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Hemp, hemp, hooray. Hemp is your friend. Hemp is your friend. If you guys go to my YouTube channel, I have um, clips of both of my talks here last year. I gave an entire hour or hour and a half on just conscious eating. And then I did an hour of um, get more greens into your routine. So the cliff notes, the highlights of those are on my YouTube channel. If you feel like inspired by what you're hearing and you want more details, you can find it all there. Remember visionary lifestyle. Has anybody Instagrammed a picture of me up here yet? You did? <laughs> I have to give you, I gotta give you something. As I said earlier, if you just came in, if you Instagram a picture of me and tag me, I'm going to give you some delicious and nutritious prizes. Thank you, honey. Let's see if this is ready to go. Is anybody getting those samples? Oh, have they gone out yet? You guys getting the green one? Oh. Oh, okay. We need more. Mmm, there's a little more sweetness. What's your Instagram name? Visionary Lifestyle Guide, all with underscores in between the words. <laughs> um, and I also have Visionary Lifestyle Podcast, because I didn't even tell you guys yet. Um, I didn't even tell you guys yet that I have a podcast where I talk about all this stuff, because this is my favorite conversation to have. We talk about yoga, meditation, and conscious eating primarily, all kinds of healing. But I have a lot of conversations around conscious eating because I see it very clearly as a solution to all these huge world problems that we're talking about today. Perfect. Thank you. So if this is like a one shot. You know, you make this one choice to switch from animals to plants, say, to have instead of whey, to have hemp. And it's literally a decision that shifts the trajectory of the planet and the entire human race. It is so powerful. That's the nugget that I want you guys to take away. I can let you do that. Um, and this is for you. I don't want to throw it at you, but I'm going to throw it at you. OK. You're welcome. And participation earns prizes. Did you Instagram me? Not yet. Not yet. You're working on it because the signal? <laughs> All right, well, come see me after if you, if you did, and we'll, we'll work out some prizes for you guys. Okay, so um, you guys want to do another recipe? You want to learn another one? Okay, um, I'm going to show you 
one, again, I try to keep them really simple because I want to make this easy for you guys. We're talking about superfoods, right? Superfoods are a great way to get a lot of nutrition in a little tiny package. And it's important to, as we're talking about conscious eating and, thank you, and um, eating in harmony with the planet, we have to pay attention to our sourcing of our food, right? So the very best, of course, is to grow your own food, right? Grow your own food is the best possible, most um, planet-friendly way to get your food is to grow your own, of course, organically, um, non-GMO. GMOs are killing the planet. Let's get clear on that. So non-GMO, whole foods, plant-based. Growing your own food. If you can't grow your own food, maybe you can get food from your neighbor. If you can't get food from your neighbor, maybe you can get it from your local farmer's market. Farmer's markets are just growing exponentially, right? They're popping up everywhere. Get to know your farmer. Get to know your farmer. I went to see my farmer to pick up these greens in Ojai on the way up here. These were just picked the morning before I came up. And while I was there, I said, what else do you have? And he said, mulberries. I just picked mulberries. And he had two baskets of just red, juicy, ripe, like brand new, like this long, right off the tree. Like I just ate them in my car all the way, like on my drive up here. And it's just like heaven. Get to know your farmer. And he gave me daisies that he grew right there. Like that's so sweet. So the next recipe we're going to do. And the next, the next step to that is if you can't, if you don't have a farmer's market, do the best you can, buy organic, and shop in the bulk section in the grocery store, you know, for your grains and your legumes and things, shop in the, in the bulk section. So this is kale, obviously, right? Who has kale in their diet at this point? Yeah, very good. You'll find that one in my top 10 um, conscious eating superfoods in my free ebook on my website, which you'll get if you're giving me your email, which hopefully those lists are still circulating around. Um, so this recipe has kale, which is, do you know that the darker the color, the more vitamins and minerals it has? Are you guys aware of this? Fun fact about food, and we want to eat the rainbow, right? We want to eat as many colors as we can. That's how we keep a balanced diet. So as I was talking about the sourcing, superfoods, you know, these are somewhat processed foods, right? That we're going to do some maki berry right now. We're going to do a super antioxidant maki cacao kale smoothie. And these are very concentrated foods and they are somewhat processed, but it's a trade-off because this, you know, we're not doing whole foods because in order to have enough maki berries in this blender to get the same nutrients, it would be, fill up the blender. So. This, these are really convenient for our mobile kind of nomadic gypsy lifestyle that we're in here camping and going to festivals and stuff. My breakfast most of the mornings here has been a cup with chia seeds and hemp milk and, and hemp seeds stirred in there and some fresh fruit, maybe a little bit of stevia, maybe a little bit of cinnamon. That's the perfect easy camping food and I had that like four hours ago. I'm not hungry at all. I feel totally nourished. I feel totally vibrant and healthy. They gave me my protein, my calcium, my magnesium, which we're all deficient in magnesium. So it's really, I, I want to simplify this lifestyle for you guys. I want to make it really simple and easy and a no brainer that you, of course you're going to say, yes, I'm going to go that way and I'm going to do this. So maki berry is really high on the auric scale. So this is massive, massive antioxidants. So it's, it's higher than acai. We all know we're all familiar with acai, but maybe maki, not so much. And who's a fan of cacao? Krakow, as I like to call it, right? Krakow, anyone? Right, so cacao is also super high on the auric scale. And in fact, you can get my, um, my free chocolate superfood recipe is also on my website. So if you're into chocolate, definitely check that out. Okay, we're going to do a bit of the vanilla again because it makes everything yummier. We're going to do a bit of the cinnamon. We're going to do some stevia because the greens do make it a bit bitter, so it's nice to balance out the bitterness with some sweet. I'm going to do one more. And then, of course, our hemp seeds. Hemp seeds and big thanks to Navitas. This is a company that I've thoroughly vetted and, and supported, and they support me a lot in 
um, always giving samples and things and for um, the shows because if you're going to use superfoods, make sure you vet the company and make sure that everything's being really done organically and fair trade and in a sustainable way. And this company is at the top of their game for that stuff. So we're going to do a lot of hemp in there and make it rich and creamy and full of all those good things we talked about, the omegas, the proteins, the chlorophyll. So maki cacao kale. And then whatever little extra bits and bobs you want to put in there that are your favorite things. You could put maca, you could load this up with superfoods, but sometimes less is more. You know, you don't have to make every smoothie you make have every superfood you own in it, right? I'm guilty of that, by the way. I've done that. <laughs> but the idea I want to leave you with today is that this lifestyle can be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Is anybody here? Um, intending to, trying to, working on moving towards a more plant-based diet. You're all interested in that. So you're still, you're still eating animals and looking to move more towards plants, yeah? Cool, good job, good job. So I would love to know what your questions are and what is holding you back, what's in your way of you going all the way, of making every meal a plant-based meal. So availability, so the challenge is availability, okay. I feel that. I just got back from um, the Far East and I was in several countries where it was difficult to find uh, vegan food, but it, especially when traveling, it can be really challenging. Um, but consider this like when you're home, you know, your day to day. Right? When, you have, when you have control over what you're eating, when you're the one that's ordering from the menu, when you're the one that's filling the grocery cart, that is you being in your power. And every choice that you make, every choice that you make, every food choice that you make is a vote for the world that you want. And as I said, the more plants we eat, the better off your body, the animals, and the planet are. That's the win-win-win. And when you travel, try to take your own food. Take just those couple of things that I talked about. You can grab you know, chia seeds with you. You can take hemp seeds with you. You can take these little bottles of you know, vitamin and mineral green, whatever kind of green powder with you, and make your nourishing meals there. And then you order you know, brown rice and vegetables they have everywhere. Ooh, you guys are gonna love me for this. Uh, I want a little more ice. Yummy. A little more ice. So you see the hemp seeds, how, you, how versatile they are. You can also put hemp seeds, you can make pesto out of it. You can sprinkle them in salads and soups. The more hemp you can get into your body, the better off you're gonna be. I promise you that. I've never met anyone that's allergic to hemp. I don't know if there is a case of anyone that's allergic to hemp, but hemp is your friend. I'm here to tell you. Okay, let's do these. I think, yeah, we should kind of like that, yeah? Thank you, darling. Okay, so big thanks to Hannah for taking care of you guys with the samples. Yay, Hannah! Hello. And what's, what's your name? And we got Carson in the backstage back here. He's a little bit behind the scenes over here. Thank you, Carson. I have a quick question. Yes. Yeah, OK. Uh, so I enjoy when I go vegan. I enjoy vegan, and I eat a lot of these superfoods. But I find that for about three months, I start feeling tired a lot. And uh, I'd be happy to be eating vegan all the time, but when I get tired, then I go back to eating. So OK. Yeah, well, that, that brings up a great point. Thank you for that question. He's saying that he, he can, he's interested in being vegan and he goes for about three months at a time and then he notices his energy depleting and that he, he feels the need to go back to animal products to get his energy back up. Um, there is a right way to do plant-based and planet-based and there is, a, there is a wrong way to do it, for sure. I mean, 
not making any assumptions about your diet, but in general, if you're a carbitarian, right, so you're living on french fries and potato chips and bread and pasta, you know, you're not really getting the full scope of everything that you need. That's not a balanced diet. So we're talking about whole foods, plant-based balanced diet. And as I mentioned earlier, I have a online course that's 15 lessons that addresses every possible question, I hope, um, in regards to um, these things. The biggest lesson I have is the nutrition. Because if you don't do it the right way, I know people who have been you know, vegetarian or vegan for 28 years and go back to eating meat you know, because they get sick or whatever. There's a right way to do it, there's a wrong way to do it, and it's not complicated. Again, I want to simplify it for you guys. There are certain foods that have uh, certain nutrients in them that you need to be aware of. You want to make sure you have a good vitamin B supplement. You want to make sure you're supplementing vitamin D. Um, it wouldn't hurt to do some omegas. Having some algae in your diet, some blue-green algae or a chlorella spirulina, anything in that ballpark. Having those things consistently in your diet are going to help a lot. Um, you know, I also do coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. If anybody wants to work with me, we can work on Skype. And, um, you know, we can kind of address your particular issues because every body is different, right? So it's not like, well, with the exception of hemp, Hemp is the one thing that I think everybody should eat, but there's certain things like kale, for example, or even spirulina, or quinoa, you know, all these like foods that you hear of that are like the next big thing, right? Oh, coconut oil, everybody needs coconut oil. If you look at it through an Ayurvedic lens, you start to understand that every single body is different. You guys can hear me okay, right? Yeah? Um, every single body is different. And everybody has different needs and different times of the year. There's many, many variables. There's a lot to learn about what is going to most support you nutritionally. So I could sit with you and try to pinpoint what it is that maybe could take a little tweak. And you know, that's the thing too. People try it and they go, oh, it didn't work for me. You know, and they give it up. I need sample cups. Um, you know, people are very quick to say, oh, it didn't work for me. Um, there, there might need to be some fine tuning, you know? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say. Let me just taste and see how many. Because I'm just freestyling here. I'm not really measuring anything, so we'll see. Um, sure. I've, I've said it a few times. Did you just come in? Okay. <laughs> I give somebody a prize if somebody else can answer that question. Why is hemp so perfect? You already got a prize, so. You didn't get a prize? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it was your next to you. Okay, okay, you're gonna get a prize. Tell her. Tell us. It's complete protein. Yeah, so it's No. It's it's about 15 for three tablespoons. Well, we didn't even talk about that. <laughs> She's embellishing, cute. Yeah, okay, so hemp's in, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh, somebody get it for it. Okay, that, that's partially correct, but that's not the whole story. There, um, there's a lot more to it. Do you guys wanna do another tray here? Um, it's also the perfect ratio of omega, three, six, and nines. And it has chlorophyll, which is your very best friend for taking care of your body. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So next recipe. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Next recipe, we're going to make... Um, it's a little bit weird. I'm going to have to move over here. But I'm going to do the, the tempeh for you guys now because this is another protein source that I want you to be thinking about. Can't hear you, honey. The, the, the maki cacao recipe? Yeah. Well, the ingredients are maki berry, cacao, hemp, uh, kale, 
cinnamon and stevia. I think that's it, right? Simple, just a handful of ingredients. Right, she's talking about the, the planet, um, the impact on the planet. Oof, okay. That, it's true, that hemp doesn't need um, pesticides. So from a planetary perspective, from the self-love perspective, we talked about all those nutritional points, but from the planetary love perspective, it's important to note that hemp does not take a lot of pesticides or a lot of water. So that is another thing that contributes it to being the ideal food. So now what we're going to do is a little bit of coconut oil in the frying pans. And we're going to get this tempeh going for you. I'm going to show you my favorite way to make tempeh. Okay, so I do a bit of coconut oil in the pan. I don't know if you guys can see this. I guess not, huh? Doesn't matter. This is not... This is not rocket science, what I'm doing over here. Just putting some oil in a pan. And then I've got my, my tempehs all cut up and ready to go. And what I'm gonna add to this is only two ingredients. And you know, I cater a lot of yoga retreats and stuff, and I always make this, and people freak out on the, the flavor of this. And it's so easy. So I'm giving you guys my secret here. And I'm happy to do that, you know, cater retreats and stuff, but I'm way more passionate about educating you on how to eat this way yourself rather than just feeding you for a day. I want to feed you for a lifetime in a way that's in harmony with the planet and with your own body temple. And, and also, another thing I haven't talked about yet is ahimsa. Because as I mentioned, I'm a yogi. Who here considers themselves a yogi? Raise your hand if you're on the yogic path or the yogic path appeals to you and you want to move more in that direction. Yeah? Okay. So the number one tenet, the first tenet of yoga, you know, there are eight limbs of yoga. It's not just the physical practice. It's not just the asana. That's only the third limb. So we don't build a house starting on the third floor, right? We started on the first floor. So the foundation of the yogic path, the yogic lifestyle is ahimsa. Does anybody know what ahimsa means? Nonviolence, exactly. I want to give you a prize. Whoops. Somebody needs to give this to her. Jared's going to give it to you. Thank you, Jared, for doing the filming so you guys can all see this again later. Thank you, Jared. Ha round of applause for Jared. Thank you. He's going to do that little 15 minute after, after the fact clip for us. Okay. Try not to burn this. Ooh. These are going super hot. Okay, so now what I'm going to add in here is just two ingredients. So this is gluten-free tamari. You could also use Bragg's um, or non-gluten-free tamari if you want. So that's going to go in there. And that just makes it rich and salty. And then grated ginger is the other ingredient. So depending on how long you cook it, sometimes um, it'll get kind of like caramelized and crispy and, and it's super delicious and yummy. Um, So this makes like a perfect topping to go on your big green salad. Let's get a bowl if we could please, Hannah, to put these cooked ones in so that we can start sampling from here and I can cook some more and make sure everybody gets them, hopefully. So again, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have soy, I was really conflicted about actually doing this recipe for you guys because I don't necessarily wanna promote, promote soy because it's such the, 
it's such the go-to for people that are trying to not eat animals, right? For people who are just focused on the plant-based diet. Um, and a lot of the soy out there is unhealthy. If it's, uh, if it's super processed and not organic, you want to stay away from it. So like, you know, if you go out to the Chinese restaurant or whatever and there's soy, I don't think I'd touch that. That's most likely not organic. You can ask them. It's always good to ask and like up-level their awareness about that that's an important choice to you and maybe over time that will shift things. Using your voice is important. Asking for what you want. So if you're going to have soy, again, definitely 100% must be organic. Uh, fermented or sprouted um, gives you an up on the digestibility of soy because, you know, Asian people have, have the enzyme to digest soy, but the rest of us don't. So giving yourself, having the ginger on here helps a lot with the digestibility. And having it either be sprouted or fermented are important to help with the digestibility as well and the bioavailability of the protein and the nutrition. Okay, Hannah, are you here? Um, you can take this and you can take those tongs there and just do like maybe two pieces in each cup. Um, So this is, as I say, an occasional protein source. When you feel like you need that meaty texture, you know, when you want something like hearty, like when a smoothie's not cutting it for you today, you want to chew something, you know, and you want something substantial, like a meaty texture, this is a, this is a good go-to to have once in a while. I'd say, you know, once a week, max. But it's a nice treat. And the texture is delicious and the flavor is delicious. And you're getting tons of protein in this. So again, it just goes into the, the pan. Then we need to have the gluten-free tamari. And there's different, there's different kinds of tempeh. Some of them have um, like barley or made with barley and things, so they have a lot more gluten. If you're trying to be more on the gluten-free, the one I use today is just brown rice and soy. All right, we'll let those cook for a couple minutes. Another reason to move in the direction of a planet-based diet is loss of biodiversity. Who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, what we're talking about is on planet Earth right now, we're losing about a thousand species a day. A thousand species are disappearing off this planet, going extinct every day. One of them that's very close is the koala bear, about 15 years away from going extinct. The primary reason for that, the primary driver for that is the loss of their habitat for grass-fed beef. So I know some of us who are, are trying to eat more consciously think that going um, grass-fed is moving us in the right direction. But sadly, that's not the case because what the grass-fed movement does is cuts down a lot of habitat, so increasing, you know, uh, loss of biodiversity exponentially and also those cows live on the planet for about twice as long and I didn't even get to talk about yet that the methane from the cows is one of those biggest contributors to the CO2 which is causing climate change which is the biggest threat to the human species which takes me back to eating meat is suicidal at this point so I like to think of it like this, like, like we're on the Titanic right now as, as a human race and eating plants instead of animals is is what's leading us towards the Titanic, right? It's the, 
the animal agriculture culture industry is taking so many resources from the planet. It is so resource intensive, whereas plants, it's not. And it's only like 14%, right, to get to the tipping point. So if we can get 14% of us on this end of the Titanic, maybe we can like have just bring it up and like just turn it just a little bit so that we just miss the iceberg, right? I mean, what we're talking about here is a solution. We're talking about a solution to climate change, world hunger, ocean acidification, rainforest destruction. Oh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a massive list with one choice that you make every day. You have the power. Forget about worrying about who's in power, you know, your, your politicians and whatnot. They don't have the power. You have the power with this choice that you make every day to create the world that you want. So I'm here to remind you of that, to educate you about that, and to empower you with that information, hopefully in a nutritious and delicious way. Can I have that bowl again or another? I'll, I'll take this one. Okay. So I want to hear what you guys think about the tempeh. You've had some now? <laughs> yes. I, I think that to some degree the jury is still out on whether or not soy is healthy for people. Um, and it is, a, it is a great protein source if you feel like you need more protein in your diet, which most of us really don't. But I just err on the side of caution because we don't know what the science is going to say tomorrow or in five or ten years. So just proceed with caution, you know, just to err on the side of caution. You don't want to have it constantly because, you know, there might be some bad news that comes out about it in the next near future, you know or not, but either way, you don't really need it. And our, you know, our, like I said, Asian people have the enzymes to break down soy, but um, the rest of us do not. So some people might have, you know, some people are allergic to soy, some people have digestive issues with it. And that's where if it's fermented or sprouted, it eases some of those digestive issues. So here we go, this is the last pan going now. Okay, so Hannah, look at the hands that are up. If anybody that hasn't gotten a sample, let's please make sure that people get their samples. Yeah, so thriving on a planet-based diet. Anybody have any questions? Talking about herbs and supplements. You're talking about the sourcing of herbs and supplements? Yeah. Well, for anything that you put in your body and for any choice you make, anything you spend your dollars on, I would highly encourage you to check the sourcing of it. Follow the money, right? Who's profiting off of that product? And check the integrity of that, that entity, that company. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a huge variation, right, between quality of, of different um, ingredients. I think I have a little bit of time. Do you guys want me to make another picture of something? Oh, well, you know what I can do? Actually, the answer is yes, you do. And I, I'm going to make you something yummy right now. I uh, just remembered there was something else I wanted to make if I had a little bit of extra time. Okay. So, Hannah, this is another, oh cool, okay. Um, Hannah, can I give you this? Okay, watch out. Okay, good idea. And that's going to go where? Oh, the, in the, okay, I got it. Okay, thank you. Yes, reminder for everybody to compost their little taster cups, please, okay? We're on a planet-based diet, so we're going to compost, compost um, all of our cups when we're done. So this, 
is a brand new product that I didn't even know existed, but when they sent me the box of stuff, they sent me this, and I tried it yesterday, and it is so freaking delicious. It is pretty incredible. It has everything you want in it. It's proteins, greens, superfoods, probiotics, and enzymes. So this is like a perfect thing. There's no soy, there's no gluten. This is a perfect kind of thing to take with you when you're traveling, when you're going to festivals, just keep a bag of this with you. Mix it with even just water is good. I'm gonna mix it with coconut water today, which makes it pretty damn sweet. Maybe a little too sweet, but um, at least you'll, you'll get to taste it. There's a question back there. I didn't hear you. The package is what? This package? Is it compostable? Is that your question? I don't know. I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think it is, but I think it is recyclable. Yeah, that is that is an issue. I mean, that is, and that, I'm glad that you're asking that because that means your brain is working in the right way. You're thinking about the right things. That's what you need to be. You need to be thinking that way. The end, you know, of every product. And this this company, as I said, it's like once you put everything on a scale. It's like, there's certain things that can't be 100%, right? That you have to make allowances. Like, still the fact that I'm eating, this is like, a, what, hemp pea and pumpkin seed protein and sunflower seed protein and golden flax protein and hemp protein, all very sustainable crops. If I'm eating this over whey, I'm making a huge positive contribution to the planet. So you put everything on a scale, you know? I'm not making my own blend, so I have to get it in a package. So it's not 100% perfect, which is a great point. There was another question. Another great question, another great question. How do I see privilege in terms of eating this way? Um, really, I'm so super, super glad you asked that, and I'm super glad you're here, by the way. I know who you are, and I wanted you to hear this talk. I almost invited you this morning. Yeah, privilege is, is a really important topic, and I was a key person in the Occupy movement about five or six years ago where I really got schooled on privilege, and I was live streaming all of the actions, and I, I was at all the GA meetings, and I learned a lot about privilege, and it's true that being able to afford foods like this is for the privileged few, which is us here. And this diet that I'm advocating is for people that actually have that privilege, who can listen to my podcast, who can you know, stop at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or whatever their grocery store on the way to Lightning in a Bottle Festival, right? It's for those of us who, who have the choice. It's not necessarily for the village in India or where people are underserved communities. Um, you know, we do have things like Thrive Market is one of my partners and they have, they ship um, food door to door to underserved communities at a, at a discount and they take food stamps and stuff. So you can get a lot of this stuff on there. So there are some solutions that are coming for the, the underprivileged. But um, the, my, my, my message is really for the people who can, who can hear me. Like I said, listen to my podcast while you're driving in your car. Like you're privileged enough that you have a car and an iPhone that you can listen, you know. That's, that's who my message is for mainly. And, and ideally, even for those communities, if we can get them, to, they already know. If you go to Africa, they're eating lentils and rice. You know, they're not eating cows so much. You know, they're, they're doing the most sustainable because that's what's the most available. And um, I hope that answers your question. Does that address your question? Yeah, it's a very, it's a very good point and a, a good distinction to make is that what we're talking about is those of us who are traveling or in California or in the United States and we have access to all these amazing restaurants and grocery stores. If you have a chance to choose, if you have a choice to choose animals or plants, eating plants is going to be more sustainable for your body, more sustainable obviously for the animals and more sustainable as a, you know, the subject of our talk today, the planet. The, the, it's night and day the difference of the impact. Thank you. I need about four more. So this recipe is just two ingredients. It's coconut water and this, because this one is already blending everything into it. It's like a mixture of a lot of these things. So this is, this is now like my go-to festival nourishment. It's just super easy. You can just mix it in a cup with a spoon. Thanks, love. Yeah, perfect, okay. Thanks, darling. Okay. You know, I have um, a lot of 
information on my website and on my Instagram. Like I said, I'm very active on Instagram. For anybody who Instagrams a picture of me today and tags me, I have really yummy prizes for you. And I do a lot of education there. If you search Conscious Eating 101 on Instagram, you'll find a lot of my posts where I'm doing a lot of education about the impacts of our food choices. It is the number one thing that's in your control, your food choice, is the number one thing that's in your control to save the environment. There's a lot of things that are out of your control that you can work towards every day, but every day you choose what you eat. If you're eating eggs and dairy and meat especially, you are contributing to the demise of the planet. And I'm sorry to say that, and I know that hurts for those of you who are really feel attached to meat. But again, it's not your fault. You've been societally conditioned to believe that you need animal products to thrive. And it's, it's simply not true. I am not fundamentalist in my approach. I'll say now that if sometimes, once in a while, people need some animal foods medicinally to get through an imbalance in your body on a temporary basis, I'm all for it. I just did it myself. I was in India and I did a panchakarma treatment and I had to have ghee. And I was like, whoa, moral dilemma, I don't want to eat ghee. But in the end I did it because it helped me clear a 30 year old health issue that I've been having. So that's me practicing ahimsa to myself. So my point in sharing that with you is that I'm not, I'm not, you know, fundament, I'm not a fundamentalist in my approach. I understand, I need some cups, sample cups. Um, I understand that from time to time, people need some animal products to, to bring the, you know, potentially into balance. Yeah, thank you. Too much ice in this one. Um, See, this one doesn't even actually need the blender. That's how easy this one is. They also do a cacao version for those of you who are into the cacao, which by the way, you want to do on a limited basis. Cacao, you don't want to have so much cacao all day, every day. You know what, because I have it, I'm going to throw the kale in here. So I'm going to make it in from a two to a three, two to a three ingredient recipe. The more leafy greens you can get into your body, the better. Question. Well, yeah, but a lot of, are there certain foods you shouldn't mix, like food combining? Um, Ayurveda is a great thing to look at to get really specific for your dosha. Um, but generally, you don't want to mix dairy with anything. And since we're not proposing dairy, not such a big issue for us. Is there another question over here? So can't hear you at all. Um, Come closer. How do you feel about psychological mindset of people who eat artificial meat compared to um, uh, eating after Okay, this is ready. How do I feel about the psychological mindset of people who eat artificial meat? You're talking about like all these processed hemp soy things and stuff? Well, the mindset, I don't know what, what you're asking me about psychologically, but I, I can give you my, my take on eating those foods, um, which is I, I see any kind of like processed food, like fake meats and stuff as, as an acceptable transitional food. It's not something I want to get any of you hooked on. Like, oh, you can live without chicken because there's chicken strips at Trader Joe's now. No, no. That's not what we're talking about. You can live without chicken because there's chicken strips at Trader Joe's now, so have that for a meal or two and let that transition you off of going, wow, I can, I can live without, I can live without animals, you know? But I'm, th what your question brought up was for me was another point that I'd like to make. And thank you for asking that question. Let me give you a prize. Whoa. Yeah, and one for you too. Um, and I'm out of time, guys, so this is going to be the last, the last thing I say. But, um, and I need cups for this. Um, and this is ready to go out. Thank you. Maybe I'll taste it.
It's, this one is really sweet. Yeah. Um, if I had more time, I'd fine tune things a little bit better. I hope you guys like the samples. I'm kind of like throwing it together. Um, the psychological impact is, is an important discussion too. It's, it doesn't fit so much into the, hmm. Okay, actually, I guess it does. It, it, it does fit into the planet-based diet theme because everything is energy. And I can tell you, I just came from an around the world tour and I interviewed almost 50 visionary thought leaders, okay, for my podcast, which you're all listening to now, right? The Visionary Lifestyle Podcast, in case I didn't say that. Um, the common denominator between all these conversations is that everything is vibration and everything is energy. So for those of us on the yogic path, maybe we already have a deeper understanding of this. For those who are moving that direction, let, hear this now. Everything is energy. So if we're eating slaughtered animals, imagine what the energy of that is compared to a plant, right? Compared to a head of kale or even the hemp that gives its seeds willingly, right? It's not, you know, those animals, they're lined up for slaughter and they're watching their brothers and sisters, you know, go down that aisle and they're, they're terrified and they're full of fear and maybe some rage and some anger. So that's energy that's put into the meat right before it's slaughtered. And then you ingest that. So you are what you eat. Plants are life force. Green is chlorophyll is the sun. Chlorophyll is the transmutation of light to energy. So the more greens you eat, the more light you're eating. Do we want to be light or do we want to be heavy and dark? Do we want to be light and bright or do we want to be heavy and dark and angry and fearful? So that's just another thing to put into the mix. And the way that that relates to the planet-based diet is, the, is there's a, Will Tuttle wrote a book called The World Peace Diet, which is about all vegetarianism. So the, the more ahimsa we practice by eating plants instead of animals, the more peaceful we'll be and by, in turn, the more peaceful the planet will be, right? Makes sense, right? Any more questions? Last one, last one, and then I'm, and then they're, they're going to get the thing and like take me off the stage. Yeah. Yes. Well, the heart space, right? I don't know if you're here when we did that little brief heart meditation to begin with, and in fact, it's one of the lessons in my online eating course is this heart opening meditation to bring the entire world into your heart space. So if you do it with intention, your heart is here. Your hands are the extension of your heart. So if you're you're preparing food with your hands, right? If you're massaging that kale salad, you can firmly put your feet on the ground, channel that earth energy, Hayaya Pachamama, I am here, Mother Earth. Connect with that earth energy. Bring the love for the earth into your heart, through your arms, into the food. And intention, and again, it all goes back to vibration. Everything is vibration. We've all seen Dr. Emoto's work with the water, right? You put I hate you on the bottle, it turns into an, um, you know, a, a chaotic structure, right? When you freeze it, you put love onto the bottle and you get a beautiful crystalline shape, right? That's intention, that's, that's what you're putting into the food. So love is always the most important ingredient. And blessing the food before you eat it, it does raise the vibration of it. Christina, who is the genius who has been booking this whole learning kitchen, she, in fact, I'm gonna interview her and I'm gonna get her to teach me this mantra. There's a very long mantra to bless, bless your food, which I don't know yet. But the short version, which I learned from her, which I share with everyone who will listen, so bless your food before you eat it with just two breaths. Om yum. <coughs> Raise the vibration of the food before you put it in your body and that'll help your body assimilate all the nutrients even better. Thank you so much for being here today. Namaste. Oh,